rotational power. So um, there's not there's not a lot of Creativity, yes, but usually the creativity is more in what you're doing with your legs with med ball throws and how you're setting up your lower body. Um, really, with a medicine ball, again, what we're doing, Titleist, we do a screen called the, uh, the shot put. And so it's basically testing your shot put throw with a medicine ball, uh, right arm and left arm. And a lot of times we're just taking that test and we're kind of turning it into the actual exercise. So you're thinking about taking a medicine ball and we're getting that rotational force. The goal here is again, transferring the energy through the body. So how quickly can I take a lighter medicine ball and explode it? And we'll show you some demonstrations of a scoop toss versus a, versus a shot put, and then some, some slams and chop variations that we can do here. Um, so this is all about just how do we take some of the rotational stuff that we worked on last week and now starting to add some, some speed and some pop to it again. The difference is that we're taking the resistance and we're lightening it up a little bit and it's all about speed. So usually you don't want to have a higher amount of load or resistance um, when you're going for speed, right? Just in that combination, especially in that contrast training, you don't want to do a heavy, heavy load squat wise and then go and do your speed work with a heavy amount of load there too. You want to have that alteration. So uh, I am going to get myself set up here so I can toss into the net a little bit. So typically, individual my size, we're going six to eight pounds for the medicine ball. So if you have that at home or at the gym, that's ideal. Uh, but there's a couple variations that I really like. Uh, I like the idea of a scoop toss, which for me is basically going to be, I'm starting with my feet together, and this is just the introduction again. It's almost like I'm taking a half swing back, and then I'm gonna step and I'm gonna release the ball through, and I'm gonna finish in that golf posture almost, all right? So if I go into my, my net back here, I'm taking a, a half swing back as I get to the top, I'm stepping, and I'm gonna rip through as, as fast as I can. I'm thinking about that lower body going first and then the upper body uncoiling through. So basically I'm here, half swing, I'm going as hard as I can uh, into the net, into a wall. Ideally you have that set up properly. So that's, that is a scoop toss, more of a shot put, exact same uh, lower body movement, start with the feet together. Now I'm maybe holding the ball up at my chest, and it's kind of this one hand is ready to press, other hand is a guide. Again, right handed is going to look here, I'm stepping, I'm rotating, and then I'm driving through this way with the right hand, so, okay. Now, um, again, the rep scheme is going to stay three to five max there, and you're going heavy when you do it. But the key part with the rotational work is going both directions, all right? So you need to, and we'll, we'll just very, very briefly touch on the science of this, you need to train both directions. Even if as a right-handed golfer, you're only going one direction, you need to be able to move as fast as you can with the right press and with the left press. That's why when we do medicine ball and when we do speed sticks here in a little bit, we swing right-handed or we throw right-handed and we throw left-handed. The reason being, right, and this is probably somebody way smarter than I am, but the reason being is if you have a big difference in your speed production, right-handed versus left-handed, meaning your left-handed is a lot lower, uh, one, you do have a greater risk for injury. Um, I think it's a little bit because of the imbalance just in terms of the strength and the speed production. But also uh, you are automatically putting on your own parking brake, so to speak. So the closer you can get your left to match your right when it comes to overall power production, um, you're going to free up a little bit more speed actually. So what you'll see is that as the left starts to catch up to the right, the right dominant swing starts to get naturally faster. Um, and the left keeps catching up, obviously. But the farther gap, the bigger gap there is between your right and your left-handed, uh, your right will plateau. And it's kind of like you're putting on the parking brake for yourself. The big reason with that is it's almost like your nervous system only knows uh, the weakest link in your body. So even if left-handed is not your dominant way, if your nervous system can only go so fast one direction, it kind of puts the parking brake on for both directions. 
All right. So make sure uh, I would even recommend like in, even if you're not doing any of this stuff in warm up swings, make sure you're taking, you know, you don't have to be hitting balls, but make sure you're taking your swings both directions and really start training that nervous system to feel both ways, train your speed a little bit both ways and try to start getting a little bit of that rotational balance side to side. All right. The, um, the other ones that I really, really like are uh, half kneeling slams. So this is something where we're going to work on lower body stability and some upper body rotation. So I might have somebody or a wall over here and I'm coming up and across and I'm slamming down and through. Uh, if you don't have a partner to catch or you don't have a wall, what I really like is these kind of rotational over the top moves. So we're side uh, half kneeling. If my right knee's down, my left leg's forward, I'm going to rotate up and over the top and slam and try to keep my stability. Okay, so that works on good rotation of the spine, good side bend of the spine, and then that lower body stability a little bit. So that is uh, really, really good with the medicine ball from a rotational standpoint. Not over the top complex. Uh, we can add stuff with the legs where we can get a little bit of a happy Gilmore step. We can start transitioning weight, you know, side to side as we throw a little bit more. But that's where we're starting from the rotational med ball. If you buy a six pound med ball off of Amazon and you have a concrete wall in your basement or somewhere, you're gonna be able to create some really, really good rotational forces. And again, you'll be doing a heck of a lot more than the individual who just buys the orange whip and, and uses it for five minutes before they play.